The most important thing to do before drawing, as we've done in almost every other program, is to make sure the units are correct. Type Units or go to the File menu and down to Properties, then click Units along the sidebar. In most cases, you want to be working in feet or inches, or meters if you're working within the metric system. Here you can also customize how measurements are notated, in feet, inches, or decimals of a unit, as in 1 foot 6 inches or 1.5 feet. For this tutorial, we will work in feet and inches with a precision of 1 16th of an inch. First, make a plane that is 16 feet by 16 feet to act as the model base using the rectangular plane corner to corner command found here. Either in the secondary extra menu or in the command bar, choose the three point option. Place one corner of the plane at the origin 0, 0, 0 by typing this as the starting point and hitting enter. You can then type 16 feet, then click to set the direction, holding shift to you if you want it to be orthogonal to the axis, then type 16 feet again and this time click in the perpendicular direction. Now we are going to make a few simple solids such as a rectangular prism and a triangular form and then we can use the boolean tools to remove portions of these shapes. Using the box command you can see that it's quite simple to make rectangular forms. You can use all of the same strategies for precision in drawing nearly anything, typing coordinates for a point or dimensions for lines or widths, or you can just draw the form with your mouse. For the triangular form, let's first draw the profile in lines in the side view, and then use the extrude curve command. Be cautious of O-snaps if you have existing geometry when trying to draw a curve on a flat plane in side view. If the profile you draw has points that are not on the correct plane, stay in the side view and draw a rectangular surface, project your curve onto the surface to flatten it out, and keep it two-dimensional. Now type extrude curve and you can see the program creating surfaces in the direction perpendicular to your curve. The options along the top include both sides and direction, where you can change the direction of the extrusion like so. Delete input will delete the original curve when it creates the extrusion, and solid will make the extrusion into a polysurface. You can also use the cap command after you've extruded to close the volume into a polysurface. Let's make a cylindrical shape to illustrate the Boolean commands. In the top view, make a circle over one of the forms, then use the extrude curve tapered command to make this form extend beyond the shape it's within. Play with the Boolean union, difference or subtract, and intersection tools to see how they differ. It may be helpful to work in ghosted view mode to see their intersections. Now let's look at making curved surfaces using the loft and edge curve commands. To loft, you need to have a series of curves that are profiles of the surface. It is good practice to get in the habit of controlling these curves with a scaffolding of lines. This will ensure that you are making high quality geometry with curvature in the intended locations and directions. On a new construction lines layer, make a scaffolding grid in the front view that is 16 feet high and tall and that has four subdivisions in each location. This should be made out of 2D lines. The divide command is useful to build this. You'll want 16 partitions if you created a rectangle, or four if each edge is an individual line. Use the points created to draw in the rest of the grid. Use the control point curves and select intersections in this grid to make five arbitrary 2D lines. The curves will be overlapping at first. Once you have five curves, you should move the curves perpendicular to the grid, 4 feet, 8 feet, 12 feet, and 16 feet. This is best done in top view or in perspective, holding shift if you want them to remain aligned. 
Now you have a controlled sequence from which to build your loft. The curves share a geometric logic. Use the loft command to select the curves in order. You may need to rebuild or change the curve directions if needed. Be careful about where along your lines you select to loft. Try and keep it consistently near an edge or your loft may go askew. For the edge curve command, let's use the same set of curves created in the previous section, but let's make two new curves that use the endpoints as the input for curve interpolate points, not quite the same as the previous command. Once the new curves are made, you can delete the three curves at 4 feet, 8 feet, and 12 feet if you so choose. Then use the surface from edge curves command, select the four edges, and hit enter. Notice that the two resulting surfaces are quite different, and if you kept the intermediate curves, you can see where exactly the surfaces differ. The last thing we will make is a curved wire. To do this, we will first create some scaffolding lines to control the location of the wire in space. Then we will draw a curve, and lastly, we will sweep a small diameter circle around the line to give it thickness. Copy the 16-foot scaffolding grid created in the previous step at a distance of 16 feet. Then use the Rotate 3D command with the Copy option set to Yes to make a bottom and intermediate surface. You can also use the Gumball and hold Alt, which makes a copy, to make the same adjustments. Now use points on these grids to create a 3D curve with the control points curve command. Use the pipe command to give this line thickness. You can set the starting radius and ending radius. Unless you have a tapered pipe, these dimensions will likely be the same. These are just a few of the multitude of commands and geometry types that Rhino can make. Enjoy playing around with this very powerful program, and remember that accuracy is essential.